to our next speaker, Dr. Karen Adam. And Karen has been our chair of the advisory group that was established really to take forward thinking around Commitment 15. And Karen's going to describe some of that road. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I think I have a microphone as well. So uh, welcome to you all. And uh, I'm absolutely delighted to be here on this lovely sunny, cold morning in uh, Hamden, my daughter was saying to me, oh, mum, get you, you're doing a, a gig, a stadium gig, which I hardly even understood, but she said everyone would find that funny. Uh, following uh, after Glenn, uh, I'm so delighted to be part of uh, this process, which is about uh, getting exactly uh, what it is that Glenn and other people like Glenn are needing. Uh, and working with, uh, I'd like to thank uh, everyone here who's been on the working group and thank you all for your interest because this is a, a passion of mine to uh, shift the balance so that uh, Glenn and uh, the other Glens that we know are able to get the connections to the help that they need uh, to uh, live uh, a good life and it really brings it home to you seeing what he had to say. Uh, so I'm here today as uh, the privilege of having the, the chair of the advisory group for uh, self-management and social prescribing. And uh, Shona flashed up uh, our commitment. Uh, we were set up in uh, 2013 following Shona's work. Uh, and uh, our part of commitment 15 uh, was to focus on promoting uh, public mental health, recognising common uh, comorbidities, and promoting non-medical uh, sources of support, connecting people together and empowering people to be in charge of their uh, own, uh, finding their own solutions. So the understanding here is that we're rooted in um, an effective context of rethinking how we respond to, in all our agencies to common mental health problems. Uh, Glenn was talking about some of that, the stigma uh, really added to his difficulties round about his uh, diagnosed mental health problems. And the idea is for us to get the right uh, support for people in the right place at the right time and the right support that they need. Shona had a very complicated diagram, so I'm going to have one too. Again, you don't need to look at the detail of this, but this is how we set out saying, well, if we've got this very complicated agenda, which is to help to shift things uh, from the way they are now, a mainly um, institutional uh, and organisational based model, to shifting it towards uh, people being empowered to uh, look after their own good mental health, then uh, how do we go about it? So uh, this was the diagram that uh, we put forward as our starting point, moving from uh, what we can do um, in, the, in the first instance and then where we're trying to reach uh, into people uh, in the organisations in their local places. And our steps to achieve our goals uh, were to agree our remit and what exactly we were going to do because then that got us the power to start on our journey and have a validity uh, right the way through to the Scottish Government. So what we, we had a big agenda here uh, which was to um, work with key partners to understand the benefits of connecting people up and to show how to make it happen and importantly how to sustain it. We had our big agenda was to influence change all the way through Scotland uh, and to uh, get buy-in all the way through the system. So again, you'll have this slide to uh, take away with you. The key thing was get ourselves started and get some validity. And then um, the next thing that we did uh, was to find out who was passionate about this. So I worked closely with Wendy and Shona and with others to find out who would like to come and join us. Uh, Shona made the joke about the Usher Hall, but our group is very large and it's fantastic 
because it's still growing. And these are all folk like yourself who are really interested in making something different happen here and seeing this as a new chance to make things happen. So we sought people out all over Scotland in all uh, organisations, uh, growing the group as people uh, gave us different expertise and uh, pointed us in the direction of new members and uh, working together to get a common understanding of what made up this thing called social prescribing, who could get involved with it and how it would be effective. The next steps that we took were to look at uh, what work had been done in the past. Uh, very good work had been done uh, pulling together uh, all the literature and we wanted to update that. We wanted to look um, at what was happening over Scotland and there's a diverse picture. Some areas uh, doing very active with a lot of projects going on and a lot of initiatives and some with not very much happening. And we also wanted to link with other initiatives that are already underway because this was about being complementary to other people's initiatives, not setting off on a completely different, uh, unique path. So we linked together with um, what was happening in the Royal College of General Practitioners, uh, the development of the Ginsberg system, which you'll hear about later, uh, and very importantly with the Alliance uh, and with um, the local information uh, system for Scotland and of Milo, which were running and gathering pace uh, as we began our group. So key people uh, in the group offered uh, to <coughs> lead pieces of work because this was all about uh, tapping into people's expertise. So we worked mainly in the group through uh, our working groups. And I'd like to really thank uh, everyone who's been involved um, in these groups. And the groups are about uh, taking knowledge into action. So that's looking at, and it's really the spine of our work, looking at what we know about uh, this whole system, how it has been put into action elsewhere, practical examples, stories of success, and looking at uh, how we can take what's um, in, a, in a book or uh, in uh, a research paper and turn that into something on the ground that can make a difference for people. We also looked at uh, equalities and how we can uh, include people uh, who inexperience inequalities uh, about access and opportunities in something which um, we know uh, people with better access can often get support. Uh, but those who don't have that uh, access find it very difficult. So we were very keen to ensure that we had a strand about that. We wanted to look at how to evaluate uh, projects so that we could be, begin to gather um, information which everyone can use to prove that this is a worthwhile way of uh, going about uh, changing the system to build up a picture of uh, the results for people and the services, the change that can be made. So the more uh, robust evidence that we can gather, uh, the more the approach will be used. And then we had a subgroup uh, working on uh, capacity building and partnership, uh, because when you want a change to be made, you've got to bring together the people and build their capacity up so that they can uh, make things change and sustain it into the future. So again, thank you to those working groups. So what um, has been going on uh, in the big world during this time? Uh, well, we've been making uh, links with the Royal College of General Practitioners um, in Scotland and all the public health initiatives with the Deep End practices in Glasgow and with the Alliance on the very good work that's being done. Uh, you'll hear more about that today. And, uh, this is all about how uh, general practice can work uh, very effectively to support uh, people um, and prevent progress uh, of problems. We've also been testing out new ideas, and I was just hearing about an initiative in Renfrewshire uh, before we started today, about how to support the third sector as a key partner in uh, community planning as we go forward into the integration agenda. 
and also linking with uh, bigger agendas that are that have an uh, impetus of their own. Uh, the integration agenda is one of those, of course, how we work closely with partners in the community, but also the multimorbidity agenda uh, and other agendas that are, are running. I was uh, talking earlier to uh, someone, and with uh, kind permission from uh, Peter Allen in uh, Dundee City Council, uh, I'm showing this prevention uh, framework uh, that uh, has been developed in Dundee. And this, I think, really encapsulates exactly what it is we're trying to do. On the, uh, left, on the right side there, you see a big circle that's red. It's uncontrollable. It uses a lot of our resources. And uh, it's a negative cycle of crisis. Our money goes into there, and we don't know how to stop it. We can't stop it happening in there. And it's all about repeat visits asking again and again for help, crisis response, which is expensive. And here on the left is where we're trying to get to. The left circle is uh, small, but uh, in there, people are in control of their own issues. Uh, it's Shinari, which is safe, healthy, active. People are nurtured, achieving, respected, responsible, and included. And in that place, people are uh, empowered to be in control of their own health and well-being. So the uh, marvelous thing that's uh, been articulated in this diagram framework is how prevention and intervention fits into that. And as you see on the, the, the journey between on being on your right and being on your left, when you take somebody out of crisis and work really thoroughly, to support them, get right support, then you can uh, bring people with recovery-based focus through into that uh, green cycle side. And at the bottom is all about prevention, the public health, mental health approach. And that uh, is articulated, as Shona was saying earlier, in the coming together of these work streams at Scottish government level, that if we do prevention that hits everybody, if we do prevention at the people most at risk, and if as soon as somebody has a problem, we intervene very early, then they don't progress towards that red cycle side. We're bringing them back into the green. So this, I think, is a fantastic way of uh, looking at how we can shift people's um, thinking in commissioning and integration about this. And once again, I'm very grateful to Dundee City Council for allowing me to use this slide. So what next? Um, we uh, have a, a short target, which is we're putting in a report um, by the end of this month. Uh, but this is all about, uh, as well as sharing our knowledge in that report, this is not the end. This is a dynamic approach. and. The uh, commitment 15 uh, until the end of 2015 means that we have the whole 12 months to really articulate in more detail what is in the report and how to make that a uh, reality over Scotland. Uh, well, Scotland is going to be hosting an active site which will support accessible information, supporting everyone to be able to link together to find out what's going on and information to get the project running. And we'll have an ongoing national network to support people in learning, research, and evaluation, and development ideas. So we're building up an active uh, future as we go here. And uh, so I'd like, once again, to thank everybody who's been involved so far to say that this is a very firm foundation, and that uh, with the agendas coming together, this is a journey that we're uh, about to hop away off on. And uh, thank you to uh, Equally Well and Dundee for this lovely picture of a, a youngster. So you'll get more chances as they go on to hear about the detail of the work we've been doing. We'd like to hear from you about how we'll go better and we'll continue our journey. So thank you very much. Great, it is speed presentations right enough, isn't it? 
Um, thank you, Karen. That was that was fantastic and a really good overview, I think, of the work to date.